All right. This is the Revolution Podcast. <laughs> and we're gonna take some breaths together. I'm so excited to share Brandon and Jenny Hawk of the Hawk Flock mm-hmm. with you, family. And uh, yeah, let's just take three, three deep ones together. Start mm-hmm. with that inhale. holding this one at the top for just a second. Calling that gratitude, clear transmission, community on the exhale. Yeah. That felt good. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh, so it's good fun. to be with y'all. Didn't even know this would happen until a few hours ago. Now yeah. we're here. I love it. Yeah. So some of you may remember Brandon, he's been on the podcast, he's been on the stream, we had a really powerful sermon on money and and emotional bypassing and things like that, and I'm so excited to welcome Jenny, Brandon's Mm -hmm. queen, Mm -hmm. and and yeah, this this video I titled, you know, when, when men are men and women are women, and I was just sharing to them before we started, you know, in my work, I find myself coaching large groups of men, either in men's circles or retreats, that are really seeking to step into masculinity because they've mm-hmm. been somewhere else. And then when my private client work, I find myself dealing with really powerful women who, through using their masculine side, logic, business, hustle, have achieved a lot of success, but have lost connection with their femininity. Mm-hmm. And I think it's fitting being back here in Texas, yeah. <laughs> where I, I was born and raised. and. You guys are also Texans. Uh-huh. We're here in beautiful Austin, the capital, and yeah, just I guess just let's just start there. Like you were, yeah. you were about to go on a powerful riff about you know men making that jump um, into manhood and what the bridge is, which is where those oh, rites yeah. of passage are. Yeah, I know for um, for myself, um, we can talk in theory and in concept, but this is really about my own journey, which has been from orphan to father. Mm -hmm. and a critical part of going from orphan to father is you have to become a son and I think that's a part that is left out and I know you do the sacred sons right and I think it's so important that um, yeah that that men do not skip that portion of of like how to truly become a son Mm -hmm. and what it is like to to uh, yeah to, to live in true sonship, right? Mm. We know what it's like to bypass our heart. Or I know what it was like to bypass my heart and to perform for love and approval so right. that I could get that from uh, my parents and, out, and love and approval outside of myself. And, and I just lived with that orphaned heart. And, um, and then you have kids. <laughs> and you're thrust into fatherhood, right? right. But still, but still orphaned. Mm. And I know for me, the journey has been learning how to truly be a son. Yeah. And uh, that has catapulted me into, you know, you know, healing my victimness, healing my orphaned heart, and still on that journey. Sure. And <laughs> what it does is it gives me the ability to uh, father. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, this is this is so profound. I can definitely relate to feeling like an orphan, even with the family structure mm-hmm. in place, like an emotional orphan. That's right. Mm. And I think this is a big code for the men out there: is like you have to be a son before you can be a father. Yeah. And being a son isn't given in a lot of our family dynamics. Like it's something that has to be like leaned into. Yeah. And I'd be curious for you, Jenny, what, yeah, what this brings up around the, the feminine and for women. Mm-hmm. Like right now, I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I have a lot going through my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think with what you said earlier, I started out, you know, as a little girl in school and everything, being in sports and being good at making good grades and being kind of in that masculine world. I like kind of got my value from mm-hmm. being good at some of those things and competing and and all of that. So I think, and, and also and in a religious environment and mm-hmm. we, we got married in a religious state. 
And so um, I think at home, I kind of took over some masculine roles with being good at money and being organized and um, stuff like that. So, but then in like the outside world, I think Brandon was more the masculine energy, but mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it was definitely a journey because I don't think that didn't work out very well. Mm -hmm. uh, me at home being that controller and that, um, yeah, she was really because I was good at it. And I was yeah. like, I'm not letting Brandon do it. He's not good <laughs> yeah. at it. The like, control you want to let off the, yeah. the clutch. Off and, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so yeah. we've been on definitely an up and down or a journey. I think we've picked each other perfectly because so do you, we have sparked each other's fears and, and had to really. Mm -hmm. I've had to be able to become yeah. a woman and trust, like really trust in something bigger than Brandon or religion or any of that to really trust my feminine. Wow. And so would you say that coming up in that environment, like you said, being in a relationship young, being in a church environment, that you, that was like your conditioning? Like it felt like you, oh, I, I need to like step into in the home, like taking on this masculine yeah. roles. Like it was not like something you chose, like, oh, I guess I'll switch into this. It was, no, I know, it was just very so unconscious, just, just unconscious, yeah. And you're just not taught how to operate in your feminine at all. Right. In those, in, in that kind of upbringing. Wow. So it's been a fun journey to learn, and it feels very empowering to let go. And even in the past six months, like letting mm -hmm. you really be more in control of some of those areas that yeah. doesn't feel good to me. Yeah. And, and I saw that it was easy to be masculine externally to the world, and and. I'm more of an external person, but coming into the home, um, I would relinquish kind of that role and step back into little boy mm. and um, like Jenny, take care of me or Jenny, you know, uh, do some of these things that, that feel hard to me so I don't have to feel certain feelings. And so and that's I, not very attractive, is it? <laughs> Well, I mean, and I'm not very attractive. And I'm, and I'm, I'm just saying, and that's I not mean, very, he's not very attractive to me when I'm like, no, you can't do that, or no, you can't spin that, or no, right. this is this. And yeah. Like, well, I think, I think a lot of people can relate, and this is something that came up really strongly in the last Sacred Sons, which shout out mm -hmm. to these guys, amazing group of men. Um, I think I would love to connect you with them. I see some synergy yeah. there. Um, but the mother wound. The mother and father wound. Because mm -hmm. when that mother-son dynamic emerges in a relationship, and mm -hmm. I can relate, like I think mm -hmm. most people can, as a man switching into like the son, like boy, and then the mother comes online. And that does two things. Kills sexual polarity. Mm -hmm. And two, it enables a lot of control patterns and dramas. Mm -hmm. You know, like poor me, or like the intimidator, or like, you know, all these little, yes. these little demons running amok. And then the opposite can happen too. And you see this with, I think, money with... Um, father daughter where yeah. the man is like financially sovereign and the woman isn't mm -hmm. that enables that pattern yeah, and I think that one actually may be awesome. less common in my generation for some reason mm -hmm. there's a lot more boys because oh, yeah. yeah. the women have just, just kind of armored up they put on the armor oh, yeah. and they're like well if there's no men I guess I'm going to make all the money well you're just taught you got to yeah. do that what else mm -hmm. are you going to do but be strong yeah. and yeah who else is going to help you you know like you don't there's you're not taught to trust life and trust right mm -hmm. which the feminine is all about trust right. yeah I just and i think that's the part that for me that i want to come clean with and just own is you know jenny and i have been together since we were 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. wow. she was 16 i was 17. So, and I'm 39 now. Can you so give us the micro story? Do, like, do the math, right? You, like, you said you lived down the street from each other. What was well, the story? Like, this, the the yeah. short version. We lived 30 minutes apart in okay, small towns. Okay. Yeah. We met at a baseball game. Oh my yeah. God, it's just Americana. It's yeah. a classic Texan. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. small wow. town, sweetheart. She was beauty queen. I was a prof professional tennis player. And so it was perfect for our egos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the religious and, ambiance. And the religious, yes. like, uh, wow. you know, we kind of played into all of it. And there was a, a deep attraction. And and then also just in myself. Saved unknowing. ourself till we were married. Didn't yeah. have sex. Oh. We dated for like five years. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. 
Because not an outlaw. Yeah. Very uh, classic both, Christian. Both, both of us have only been with each other sexually. <laughs> Which I don't think I've ever said that on Whoa. any other podcast wow. or anything. I think people, yeah, people will be... <laughs> Yeah, this is this is a That's, testament. It's, it's rare, right? And, it's and, rare, but it's I think it's powerful. Like, and, and we've been through probably three different marriages, yeah. You mm. know, and having to shed the skin uh, and and really be willing to let each other go, and to let the marriage go, and to get very real with where we are. And we also have three children: fourteen, thirteen, and ten. And so there's a lot, you know, riding on it. Those right. those those. those moments of release and truly letting each other go wow. and uh, I feel like that's been the thing that that why our connection has increased is because we've been willing to let go and we've been willing to let go of those things we want to control and then we've also uh, we moved towards back yeah. together because I think we we do love each other so much so we end up, we end up back in love like mm -hmm. choosing the highest vibration um, in the midst of you know after we detox all the pain and go through all the fears <laughs> yeah. and all of it I think we always do come back to say we yeah. do really love each other yeah yeah we have and I think we're like yeah for sure so I guess transformational partners yeah <laughs> that's, for a, that's sure. a great